I'd like to read to you two different statements. The first is on the back of this box here. Souls are the most valuable commodity in the universe, and by ancient laws, the one who possesses the most souls is declared the ruler of all. Your task is to use powerful characters to lure souls on your side. Choose your alignment, play your cards right, and you just may become the sovereign ruler of the universe. All right. Then on the inside of that same box is this passage here on this little card. Uh, citizens, I see that you have gathered in masses along my game. My objective in the game Dizzing was to create a game which doesn't require supreme intelligence to learn, but which provides deeper gaming experience through its tactical possibilities. I deeply hope that I have achieved this goal and you can have excellent moments with my game. Only you, dear citizens, may be the judge of that. Now I find that to be very helpful when, when doing reviews or when thinking about a game, uh, what the designer actually intended. Um, what I find interesting about, the, about these two different statements, one, the, the de designer's actual intention, and then the other being what the um, publisher, I suppose, or perhaps the designer wrote in order to let the would-be consumer of the game know about the game, I guess would-be participant would be better, um, is they're, they're very different statements. It wasn't the blurb on the back of the box that made me choose to um, pick up Soul Hunters. It was, I found it for a reasonable price, and when I looked into it, the thing that kind of grabbed me was that um, there was a governmental entity and an alien entity and these uh, some other very terrestrial entities. I guess not so much in the in the, the case of the aliens, but they were on par with the the heaven and hell, the standard people who are warring for souls um, in terms of taking souls. And I and I was interested in how that world was constructed. Um, so in a way, I wasn't I wasn't necessarily swayed by what was written on the back of the box because hunting for souls in and of itself I don't find interesting. I find it, you know, there, it's been explored enough and I don't really know what needs to be said about that. But um, this new spin on it with the government being on par with heaven um, I thought was interesting. I wanted to see what the game had to say about that. Instead, when I opened the box, I found a card game wherein the player on their turn draws a card, uh, plays a card, and can also activate a card. All right, and they activate, and they do all these things. They draw cards, play cards, activate cards in order to either go up in influence or positive influence or to have negative influence. The reason why is because after each person's had a turn, we're going to turn these souls sideways, right? So one person has a turn, you know, every round of turns sideways, 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 sideways. Then when we're done, whoever has the greatest absolute value on their influence, which means you take away the positive or negative sign and whoever has the higher number will get that soul. And that soul is basically worth points. And the player with the most points at the end of the game wins. Whether to go positive or negative um, in your quest for souls is always an interesting choice. A lot of times it will be dictated by which, what cards you have in your hand. So if we had a hand like this, right, I would see that I would have you know, three cards from factions that have negative, give negative influence, and three cards from factions that give positive influence. Here we have monarchy, government, uh, hell, cultists and aliens, right? So I would have to look at, you know, I have an even split here, so I'd have to look and, and see which I would have the better chance of getting. And sometimes, you know, you might start with predominantly one and then you would draw more cards and say, oh, look, I have, that's kind of an event card. Okay, I have more positive now, so if I had started negative, maybe I would want to switch back. And I think in the end, the game does what the the designer sets out to do. It's a simple game to play. All the cards are pretty straightforward. There's some interesting mechanisms in there. If you have all all of your cards are from the same faction, for example, you get a certain influence bonus one way or another, and the, they have certain special powers, but when you use them, um, they turn sideways and eventually they could go away. Um, and so then you wouldn't have, be able to use them, but sometimes you want them to go away so that you can you know, get a full, fuller faction and get that bonus. So I think what the designer set out to do was he was successful and, or she, I, I'm not actually sure if it's a, I'm just kind of assuming it's a male, um, was successful in that. I will say the game felt very long to me. Maybe it's because I was listening to Norwegian black metal every time I played, but it, 
feels like a really long game. I think that could be shortened by just stopping at, at the end of a particular line of souls instead of going through the whole deck of souls like you're supposed to. The game fails in respect to what the, the box promises. Um, and it also failed in, in terms of my own expectations. I don't, it doesn't say anything about why the government is at, at par with um, the almighty God or the almighty devil or whatever. Um, and I, I, I don't think games should be given a pass for that. I don't think publishers should be um, able to advertise a game in, in these terms but then have the game actually be designed for these terms. I appreciate it, uh, I may have already said this, I appreciate it when designers say what they're setting up to do. I wish publishers would do that as well. I, I, and I, I don't think that consumers should, um, should, should give in to that. I think we should be able to expect honesty in, in um, the marketing. I don't. I think we're lied to so often in marketing that we just kind of accept it and be like, oh, that's part of the world. But I don't think it has to be part of the world. And I think your dollar is a way to decide whether or not that is part of the world. Soul Hunters isn't the most flagrant example of this phenomenon. I appreciate that this um, card, this citizen's card, was included in the box. I just would have appreciated it more if it was on the back of the box as a, as a statement of intent uh, uh, to allow you to understand what you are actually purchasing rather than some, uh, uh, some statement about what the game isn't, which is um, participation in the capturing of some souls. Soul Hunters.